So guys, if you can, please subscribe to the channel and please hit the like button on this video. So guys, we've got a new story coming in and a hitman who murdered Salford's Mr. Big, Paul Massey, has been attacked in prison. Mark Fellows, who's 42 years old, was known as the Iceman and he was stabbed in the head and neck at HMP Wakefield yesterday. The double murderer was treated by prison medics and he was left with a scar after a similar attack occurred in 2019. Fellows was believed to be the gun for hire called on to kill a leading figure in a rival gang, Paul Massey, in 2015 with an Uzi submachine gun. He shot Massey and then pursued his target up the driveway of his home on Manchester Road in Salford to finish him off. Known as Salford's Mr Big, Massey was one of the city's most well-known figures. Three years later, Fellows murdered Massey's pal from Liverpool, John Scouse Kinsella. The Hitman Fellows cycled up to his target near the village of Rainhill in Merseyside as his target walked the dogs. He shot him twice in the back and then calmly approached his victim to shoot him twice more in the back of the head. Fellows was handed a whole life term in January 2019 following a 26 day trial which ended with him being convicted of two counts of murder. When he was jailed Mr Justice William Davis said so far as is known, you had no personal relation to Paul Massey. The only sensible conclusion is that you were a gun for hire, prepared to kill whoever you were asked to kill by those who hired you. As I said, he was handed a whole life term. Basically, this means he can never apply for parole. Just two weeks after he shot dead Massey, Fellows was actually shot himself outside his grandmother's house. Just a month after he was jailed, Fellows was attacked with a razor blade inside HMP Whitemore in Cambridgeshire. He was left with a scar after that incident and he also appeared in court trying to challenge his whole life term but that didn't go well. It's also understood that the latest attack on Fellows happened at HMP Wakefield last night and it's also believed that as I said he's been stabbed to the back of his head and neck in the prison grounds and he wasn't in his cell at the time. So I just thought I'd go into the story a little bit further with regards to why he's in prison. So it's believed that it all started with a drink thrown in a nightclub and it led to four years of bloodshed, including two murders, at least seven shootings and an escalation of tit-for-tat violence, which was reminiscent of the Gunchester era of the 1990s. Mark Fellows, as I said, he's become one of a number of prisoners in England and Wales who's going to be serving a whole life sentence because he was found guilty of the murder of Paul Massey and Jonkins. The Salford Hitman was nicknamed the Iceman because of his calm exterior and he fired 18 bullets with an Uzi submachine gun at Massey in July 2015 before shooting dead his associate Kinsella three years later. The execution style murders shocked the criminal underworld of the northwest England. Massey was 55 and he was a well-known face in Salford. Kinsella, he was also a well-respected figure having intervened when a gangster threatened footballer Stephen Gerrard. The unsolved murder of Massey loomed over Greater Manchester Police for three years. Detectives had 100 names as possible suspects of who's who of the Salford underworld while facing a wall of silence from the public who feared repercussions if they spoke. Even when a seven-year-old boy and his mother were shot in the legs on their doorstep as the feud escalated, no witnesses were forthcoming. It made solving the murder the one of the most difficult in Manchester's history. DCI Carl Jones, who worked on the Massey investigation, described it as probably the most taxing and at times frustrating case he and his team had ever faced. He said, when you have organised crime incidents, the obvious thing is people will not speak. You have the frustration of the victims' families who want us quite rightly to solve it quickly. It's sensitive and complex. It's so frustrating. The murders were part of what police described as a war between the rival Salford gangs, the A-Team, which was associated with Massey, and the anti-A-Team. Detectives believe it started when a woman threw a drink over a member of the A-team in a nightclub in summer 2014. Months later, the roof of a woman's VW golf car was hacked off using a saw. The violence escalated into years of chaos as a shotgun was fired into a car injuring one man before another victim suffered horrific injuries in a machete attack. In March 2015, a hand grenade was thrown at an A-team family member's house, luckily exploding outside the property in a series of reprisal shootings followed as detectives struggled to contain the violence. Fellows was already in the frame for Massey's murder. 
when he'd gone down Kinsella. It was believed the killings were strikingly similar, execution-style shootings by a man believed to have fled on a bicycle. But the breakthrough came when detectives investigated the Kinsella murder, found a Garmin watch used by fellows for long-distance running. The watch, it transpired, had recorded the hitman carrying out a reconnaissance run shortly before Massey's killing. Its data correlated with hundreds of hours of CCTV and mobile phone data that had been analysed by officers from both forces. So the end result was that Fellows was found guilty of the murders of both Massey and Kinsella, but found not guilty for the attempted murder of John Kinsella's partner. Fellows was also in the dock with his codee, Stephen Boyle. He was found convicted of the murder of Kinsella, but cleared of the murder of Massey and the attempted murder of John Kinsella's partner. However, in October 2020, Fellows also went on trial accused of attempting to murder two men, Abdul Khan and Aaron Williams, who were associates of Paul Massey. In 2015, there were a number of incidents as a result of a dispute between two Salford organised crime groups. As I said, they called themselves the A-Team and the Anti-A-Team. The incidents were all investigated as part of Operation Leopard, led by detectives from Greater Manchester Police's major incident team. The first incident investigated as part of Operation Leopard, Phase 3, it happened on 18th of February 2015. Three men were parked in a car when three shots were fired at point-blank range into the driver's door. Police later found a hidden tracker on the Mercedes that they were in. The second happened on the 21st of March 2015. Two other men were near one of their cars when they were attacked with a machete and a baseball bat. One of them was seriously injured and could have been killed if it was not for an off-duty nurse who administered first aid. Police also found a hidden tracker on that Volkswagen. The jury was told how both incidents were planned ambushes of members of the A-Team by members of the anti-A-Team. The key to the investigations were the forensic examinations of the trackers found on the vehicles. The DNA of a man who goes by the name of Aaron Parkin was found on one of those devices. Telephone analysis also linked Parkin to the purchase, deployment and monitoring of both devices. CCTV from Parkin's home showed Mark Fellows was there when the tracker was monitored in the lead up to one of the incidents. And following a six-week trial, a jury found Fellows guilty of conspiracy to cause GBH in connection with that second incident where a number of men were attacked with baseball bats and a machete. And the other lad, Aaron Parkin, he pleaded guilty to counts of conspiracy to cause GBH in connection with both incidents. And in November 2020, a judge at Manchester Crown Court sentenced Fellows to life with a minimum term of nine years, even though is doing life and parking to 14 years. So guys, that's just a quick review with regards to why he's in prison. But the news is coming out that Mark Fellows, the Iceman, has been stabbed in prison. It's your boy GT. Keep it locked, keep it real.